Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Brody Consulting Group. To get more information about our publishing and coaching services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Brody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Luke Kendall, author of the Leaf the Leaf um, Dossier Series. Luke, welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul, for inviting me. It's um, very uh, pleasing to be able to speak to you about it. Are you ready to get started? I hope my uh, I am, yes. I hope my Australian accent doesn't uh, throw people. Oh, no, it's fine. We've had plenty of Aussies on the show, and we're, we're very happy to have you on the show today. Thank you. All right, question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Um, because there's so very much you need to learn to write a good book, but because all of it's very learnable if you're determined, then my key piece of advice is to understand why you're passionate about wanting to write this first book and then just be determined. Really commit to finishing it and learning as much as you can on the journey. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? I guess that depends on whether you mean getting published by the traditional model, which I'll point out is, in my opinion is a business model that's now a couple of hundred years old. If it's that way, then it's luck. Um, winning the lottery of being found, liked, and fitting into the current market and you know marketing needs of a company. Um, but if you mean self or indie published, then I think getting published is the easy part. In that case, I think the hardest part is being discovered by the readers who'd actually enjoy your book. I think there are now over a million new books published per year worldwide, and over half of those are in English. So. Just being noticed, I think, for the indie published person is very hard. And for your books, did you go through the indie route or did you have them published traditionally? No. <laughs> well, I tried. I tried for decades for the um, for the traditional methods, but uh, I never got sort of past that first hurdle of the slush pile. Um, so, yeah, I'm self-published. So I've had to learn everything myself, I guess. And uh, it's been very educational and uh, interesting. Yeah, it definitely is a process. I started my own journey three years ago, and it was uh, I went the self published route myself. And the nice thing is you have the creative control, and but the the challenge with that is everything's on you. So to get it written, to get it published, to get it marketed, and to keep the momentum going, I think those are always the biggest challenges. But the nice thing is you have the creative freedom, and you can get books out as soon as you want to. You don't have to wait for a publisher for potentially six months, a year, or even a year and a half. That's right. Yeah. I think also that um, for the for the self-published or the indie published, you're in it for the long haul. So you 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 can just keep going and keep sort of trying to market and push the books and and while you write new ones. But with the traditional model, I think you know unless you're one of the A-list authors, the big names like J.K. Rowling or Stephen King, then you know <clears throat> you get a couple of weeks, three weeks of of uh, uh, marketing effort from the company, and if that doesn't work, well, sorry, that's it. Well, let's talk about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you've used in your book launch that worked well. Well, I'm gonna, I have to confess that, that marketing is definitely my, my uh, weak point. It's, I'm terrible at it. And I'm, right now I'm finishing up work on my fourth book. And I've promised myself that after this, I'll be getting stuck into learning as much as I can about marketing. And there's a lot to learn. There's, probably as much to learn on this side as there is about the actual writing of the book and publishing it. Um, so for the actual launch, for the, when I first, when I, by the time I got to my second book and I realised I hadn't actually done a book launch for the, for the first, I, I arranged a, an actual book launch in a, in a physical store for the two of them together and I just contacted everyone I could, so by email and uh, Facebook or whatever and I let people know and there was a good turnout and the day was very good. The bookstore was satisfied with you know the number of books sold and that sort of thing, and uh, everyone had a good time. But my printed books, I guess, are the are the least of what I sell. I probably sell only about one printed book a month, um, and certainly have had more success with the 
e-books, and for that I'd um, signed up exclusively with Amazon to do it through their Kindle Kindle Direct Publishing, um, <clears throat> and that was that was going quite well. In fact, I was um, I think my best ever month was just over two thousand dollars in sales, but then it all sort of just um, died away, and I think that was in October two thousand seventeen, and I think from talking to some other authors that Amazon changed their their algorithms that they use to actually promote books to, to readers. And I think that after that, you're expected to buy ads with Amazon. If you don't buy the ads, you don't get promoted, except in the first three months after release. So I'm still very much in the... Uh, the marketing isn't, isn't, uh, isn't a success for me at the moment, um, and I need to work out what, what to do to sort of sort that out. Well, and you bring up a great point, Luke, because th that's exactly what happened. Amazon has really pushed AMS, which is Amazon Marketing Services, and they're basically want authors to pay for Amazon, the company actually is distributing your book, to promote it. And what happened was I was in the same situation where I saw a downturn in sales last summer, so summer 2017. And fortunately, a fellow author was starting up a Amazon marketing services um, little side business where he was actually going to create all, all the ads. So I actually went with him. And for his service, it's like 20% of your profits, which is which is fair. I could I could deal with that. But the nice thing is I have 13 books out. So he was able to go in and do ads for all of them. But the other thing is you have to do ads every month because it's very much with how the Amazon algorithm works, even with marketing, um, with using their services, the maximum effect is always the first 30 days. So you have to have continued ads. Unfortunately, he does that where we get a series of new ads put in every single month. But you're right, that's the issue right now. You, you can trust the Amazon algorithms for typically the first 30 to 90 days of your launch. Then after that, it's yeah. no longer the shiny new toy. And that's when it becomes a challenge where you have to go, okay, now what am I gonna do? So typically for my books, the moment it goes out of launch, we immediately put it into Amazon Marketing Services. And that's always what I recommend my clients too, to keep the momentum going because you're gonna make the line share of your front end revenue typically in those first 30 to 90 days. Right, right. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I'm quite um, saddened I suppose by it because I want to concentrate on the writing, not on the marketing side of things. Um, and things did seem to be going quite well and sort of slowly picking up over the over the first couple of years. And then, boom, and there was this mysterious change and it, it all just sort of fell away. So, yeah, I, I guess maybe Amazon thought, well, look, with a million books published a year, we can make our revenue off the authors, not off the, <clears throat> not the not, you know, as much off the authors as off the readers. Like having the authors pay for their... <laughs> They have their books promoted. Well, and it's similar with Facebook too now, where in the past, if you had 1,000 or 2,000 friends, anytime you did a post, it was posted chronologically on the wall. And what's changed now is they've actually changed those algorithms out that only a few people now get to see those posts. And if you do want to promote it, then you can pay to boost the posts. And it's very similar to what Amazon does, where they change up their algorithms, your exposure does go down after time, but you can actually cover the advertising to have them boosted. So that's what I've noticed with social media and even with Instagram now is that ah. th there's this change now where they want you to pay for the advertising and they're essentially monetizing those models. Well, I didn't know that about Facebook. That's fascinating. So even though you know the, the people that have you sort of liked and friended and they're happy to hear what you say and want to hear what you say, Facebook only pick a few of them. And if you want the others to hear about it, you've got to, paid have you essentially especially if you have an author page or if you're pro promoting a new book launch or you're promoting a product you know they always want you to boost those po those posts and the nice thing is boosting your posts it doesn't cost a lot usually five or ten right. bucks at the most but when you're doing that all the time if you're doing 30 posts a month it definitely adds up but that's how yeah. the, these sites now really monetize in regards to the revenue oh thank you that's that's very interesting no that's worthwhile knowing for sure yeah, that's one of the nice things about publishing is that you, you always got to watch the trends because it's just like education or the corporate world or anything else. The biggest consistent that you have is change and you have to keep up with those because if you don't, I always refer to the books as falling into the Amazon rainforest because you're absolutely right. There's 
millions of books that come out every year and it's really easy to get lost in that rainforest if you don't have a solid market and plan. I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, let's talk about your favorite book. So what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? That's, I think that's a super hard question. I have a lot of books I love, um, pretty much equally, by a lot of different authors. So force me to, to pick a, a first among equals is, is kind of cruel. Um, <laughs> but, but I think if I had to, if back, when we're back to the wall, I think I'd nominate the, um, the fantasy novel um, from Stephen R. Donaldson, The One Tree, it's called, from the Second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. And it's because of the single scene in that where the, the main character's in this inescapable trap. You think they're, yeah, they're doomed. And he's given a tiny opportunity, and he speaks a single word, and that will probably doom him, but, but bring the trap crashing down. And that, that was just so powerful and unexpected. And then the way he sort of, the author sort of wrote about it and it all, the, all the action unfolded was so cinematic. It was like a real fist pumping, you know, in the air sort of moment for me. And I think maybe what I learned from that is that it's possible to make a reader feel so strongly, feel like jumping up and shouting, yes, you know, with their blood singing. I guess that's what I, I learned from that. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? Um, I think it's, it's simply uh, treat others how you would like to be treated. I think that's a truth that could form the foundations for solving most of the world's problems. Not all of them, but a lot of them. The world would be a lot happier place if we all just sort of treated other people like we want to be treated. Absolutely. I guess, I guess there's a there's the percentage of people for that for which that wouldn't work that are sort of trying to, to, just um, very self-centered and uh, self-interested. And maybe, maybe for those people you don't treat them so kindly. But uh, for the rest, the, the vast majority, just treat them how you'd like to be treated. Absolutely. I, I am a firm believer in karma. What goes around comes around. You do good, you help others. It's going to come back in a good way. And if you don't, then it's going to come back in a whole different way. Absolutely. And in, I found in the, um, in, the, in the author sort of role, job, that people are really generally super supportive and, you know, they'll go out of their way to help you. And so, you know, I guess because it's hard that we all sort of have to help each other to, to sort of keep our heads above water. So, so I've found lots of really supportive people, and I, I try to be equally supportive to other people too. Yeah, I have the same because philosophy. Because it does come well. back to you, I think. Yeah, as, as you're saying, I have the same philosophy with that as well. I mean, it goes around, comes around, it truly is. Yeah. Well, Luke, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Well, um, I just a Google search of Kendall and Leith Dossier works well, provided you get the spelling right. Um, Perhaps safer is a search for a toe in the ocean of books, my blog. Um, or just search LJ Kendall on Amazon or Twitter. I, I try to stay visible. Well, Luke, not, uh, not hidden in my garret. <laughs> well, Luke, I want to thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thanks very much, Paul, for having me. And uh, I've learned things by just by talking to you today. Thanks very much. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how to get your book published with a proven system that works, grab a free copy of my book at getpublishedpodcast.com.